This episode, I'm in McKinney, Texas to get to know David with Mower Man Lawn Service. For me, I like to be everything as safe as possible because I don't want to catch on fire fueling <laughs> right. my equipment. Yeah. Number one city to live in and have a small business. social media you get random messages telling you you know I, I don't believe you actually run a landscaping company you mow 10 jobs a day I mean 10 jobs you know a week yeah. and I don't my truck would not look like this <laughs> <laughs> if I did 10 jobs a week it's more like 10 a day and then it jumps up to uh, almost 15 sometimes yeah for me I like to be everything as safe as possible because I don't want to catch on fire fueling <laughs> right. my equipment yeah so here, here's the kit it comes with with this. Okay. For the smaller cans. Okay. So you like this bed rail system here? I I, I love it, dude. Yeah. It's been really. So that's great. in addition to your trailer. Yes. It's Before right. I had the truck set up, I ran out of my trailer. Right. But now, uh, basically, fifty percent of the time, I'd run out of my truck. Oh, so you was what you're saying is you don't always take the trailer. No, is what you're saying. I don't always take the trailer. So what's the difference? How come sometimes you use the trailer and sometimes you just use the because truck? Because I need the rider. Properties. I need the rider, For and then I have most jobs on days, or you know, I have to get a, a pallet of sod to do do little jobs like that. So that's when I take the trailer when I have to be fully, you know, set up. So my company started in Bentonville, Arkansas. Oh, um, wow. okay. I started there, so that's like four or five hundred miles north from here. Okay. And that's where I basically got into the industry and uh, noticed that I really like doing what I do, uh, which is mowing yards. You know, I, I love the landscaping part, but more more so the equipment. Uh, I wanted to get better equipment, which I did slowly and you know it just takes time it doesn't just happen overnight right being an influencer was not up in the plan from the beginning it was i have to support my family uh in any means possible that's that's legal yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna do anything legal cheat people i'm gonna be honest uh provide the best service that i can if i can't do something i tell the customer i can't do that for you i, I don't have no skills in that how long have you lived in McKinney? We've been in McKinney for, I want to say, three years now. Um, we're rebuilding a company that we had in Arkansas. But going back to, we were in Arkansas. From Arkansas, after me noticing that I wanted to do more with it, I went to San Diego, California to go year-round because I wanted to do it oh, wow. you know, to the next level, basically, all the time. Yeah, I was very hungry, you know, wow. wanting to be very successful yeah. and that's commitment, right? Yeah, there. that was major commitment wanting to do something like that and uh, You know, it wasn't the greatest choice I ever made uh, for the business or for my family uh, We went there and so the whole family went there. the whole family went so we, we went there and for two years, you know, I, I tried to, to build up the customer base, but during the time we, we had a drought that basically was getting so bad that you couldn't even take a shower at the beach to wash the salt off. Wow. And you, you had certain days that you had to water your ground, and I had no experience with zero scape, so that's something that I didn't, you know, expand into. 
So I had to pick up a job at Lowe's because, you know, I thought at that point, you know, my hopes and dreams or whatever I wanted to do yeah. with my future was, was gone. I got to the point that I was, I guess, I'm going to walk away from the industry because, you know, it got so bad. And it, it wasn't really great for me to even say that because it was so successful in Arkansas, I was like, how can, this cannot be um, the end. There has to be more to it. Right. We happened to watch uh, House, House at a House the second year, towards the end of the second year of being there. And uh, they had pictures all over the house. Everyone was happy in their pictures. And to myself, I was like, I want to have that happiness for my family. So I need to do something. There was a sticky that had a, a name on it. The name said McKinney. We asked the people that we were house sitting the house. And you're like, who? Why do you have a sticky? Did you leave us a note? <laughs> so we at that time, we were looking for a place to live. And the the family that we were house sitting told us that's actually the name of uh, one of the the nieces that they have. Oh, it wasn't a McKinney. city. Oh. So we were like, okay, let me do some more research. What is this McKinney? Is there a place called McKinney? And we did some research, <laughs> wow. and Texas was an idea, but it, we put one in one together. We put Texas and McKinney together, and like. So, what is McKinney, Texas? So we did some research. Came across an article, 2015, uh, Money Magazine. Number one city to live in and have a small business. Wow. From that moment, we did more research. What is the area like? Is there grass there to mow? Is it like the desert like Arizona? Because I know New Mexico is pretty dry and there's not much grass there. Arizona's about the same way. So we wonder what what it was like. We saw a lot of pictures with grass. So we were like, you, you know what? If there's a Money Magazine article saying that we should go, we found a sticky that was randomly placed or whether it was there intentionally, yeah. It's, it was almost like it's, it's it's like fate. It's destiny, you know. <laughs> My heart was like, you know what? It's it's wow. the hope we were looking for. Wow. Uh, a, a lot great of people story. have they grow up in a service area and they work and they grow their business. But for me, I have multiple like life changing moments for my business. Yeah. I came here, and I've been running. Um, I haven't had really too much time to do more with social media. When I came here, I got serious about social media. I wanted to do more. Like on an influencer level. On an influencer right, yeah. level to help people not have to go through what I have gone through. Yeah. Yes, I didn't have to move from Arkansas. But sometimes you do things in life that you don't know are going to affect you that much. Yeah. You take um, chances, but you would have probably never ended up here if it wasn't for that. I would have never have moved to Texas if I wouldn't have taken the chance to to go all the way. Yeah. That's an awesome story, man. Keep putting yourself out there and, and only good things come. So I've given my heart and soul to some of the companies I've worked with because I don't have anything to lose. I don't. Yeah. You're probably like, shoot, you're gonna make me cry, dude. <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. That's deep stuff. Me sharing man. My, That's awesome. my life experience. Uh, That's... A lot of people see that, oh, Mormon did this, Mormon did that. But they don't know what But you, they don't know the background. The this, is why, this is why I do, this is why I'm doing this, man. This is why I'm doing this to get these stories out. But there's people out there that will see this and they will be affected by it in a positive way. And hopefully they'll make the right change or take the right chances in their life, you know? Yeah. So that's that's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, you, you can't really be scared to to make the wrong choice. Just do it. The wrong choice is not making one. Yes. The wrong choice is not making a choice at all.
go for what you think is going to the best thing that you can do and see where it takes you. Yeah. Awesome. So how do you handle work-life balance? Like, obviously you're a family man, right? You're solo, still running, the, running your business, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how, do you, how do you handle work and family? So we have two calendars, a dry erase board, and then a pencil calendar that I have my work schedule, and I constantly look at both schedules to see what's going to happen. Um, my kids get out of school around around two and three, so for those two hours, I have to stop working, go pick them up. Uh, usually, they come with me to do one or two jobs. And then once mom gets off around five, you know, she takes care of them and, and I go back out. But this week is the last week that they'll be in school. So mom won't have to watch them. Um, my son will be uh, become a worker. He'll come out with me in the field. Nice. He's nine. And then my daughter will go into daycare. So no more stopping. It's going to be go, go, go times. So your son's been really helpful, huh? Yeah, he runs the blower. It's like, go blow while I'm trimming. Yeah. So he'll run, I'll trim the front, and then he fires up his blower and gets going. That saves a lot of time, and also he's, you know, uh, he's working with dad, you know, right? Yeah. So it's probably some good father-son bonding. There. Definitely. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to have a quick uh, rapid-fire question-answer session. You Ooh, ready? Oh, shoot. All right. Stand-on or sit-down mower? I would prefer to get into stand-on mowers because um, I don't really like sitting. What do you do when you're not working? But I'm not working, I'm just watching movies with my kids, spending time with them, trying to take them to baseball games. My son wants to get into soccer, we'll see how that goes. Um, my daughter wants to get into cheerleading next year. My wife's trying to sign her up to that, so we'll see how that one takes her too. How would you define success? I guess everyone has their different type of success. Uh, I guess my success is that my family is well taken care of with what I have. Um, I do want more, but you know, I guess it will come with time if, you know, I guess if the blessing of more work would happen at the same time with equipment, everything would change, but you're only given as much as you can take. Uh, and sometimes it, you know, you think you're going through something that's hard and that you're never gonna get through it, you'll get through it. That's awesome, man. Thanks for letting me stop by. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the good work. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell for future notifications. Check back for the next episode in two weeks and catch my live show on echomeansbusiness.com every third Wednesday of the month.